Peace to the world, it's Black Youth Jobs, and you're watching Fam TV. You're watching Fam TV, my G, Fam TV. Hi, my name is Zainab, and you're watching Fam TV. Hey, what's up? This is Farley Flecty. Check it out. Fearless African Movement, otherwise known as Fam. You got to check it out. It's the hottest thing on TV nowadays. Make sure you're there, make sure you understand, and make sure you communicate. I'm Charmin McDonald, and you're watching Fam TV. I'm Amanda Paris, and you are watching Fam TV. What's up, people? It's your boy, Mr. J. Martin, and you tuned into what? Fam TV. Check it out. It's Zan, aka Blast Void. We're watching Fam TV. Family. My name is Remy, and and you are watching Fam TV.
sing to you as a child. Fado moi sandu kretso, abaha daru yatta, koye dei bure dutsa. Fado moi sandu kretso, abaha daru yatta, koye dei bure dutsa. All the African people make some noise. Um, for those of you who can see, uh, there's a big blue box right here. Do you mind carrying this for me for a second? Uh, I carry this box every single day uh, from October 2015 to October 2016 uh, for 365 days on the train, on my way to school, on my way to work, hoping that when a stranger saw me with this box, they would ask me, hey, What's up with the box? And I would then get the opportunity to tell them about my brother, Bilal, who lives with autism. Hands up if you've ever heard of autism before. Wow, this makes you really happy. Beautiful. Hands up if you know someone, maybe in your community, maybe a family member. Beautiful, so good to see that almost every hand is up. Uh, hands up if uh, he or she or they is a person in their immediate family. So. Okay, beautiful. Now we'll be a little bit more specific. Brother, sister, or child. Okay. And hands up, anyone who lives with autism? Hello, good to see you, love. Mad love, mad love, I see you, I see you. Give it up for all the people who live with autism, please. during this challenge was that people were more likely to help me with a box than they were to help or interact with my brother when we were out in public. Uh, so this was really a challenge to defeat the stigma against autism because as we all know, it's one thing to be a person that is autistic, but it's another thing to be black and autistic. A black man living with autism. So he was adorable, a black autistic boy is adorable, but a black autistic man is dangerous. And so that was what I had found uh, during this challenge. Uh, my brother is nonverbal, so that means that he can't speak. So imagine living your entire life not being able to speak. How would other people interact with you? How would you then try to interact with the world? So I saw and watched my brother navigate uh, through a neurotypical world and be the soldier that he is. Often, um, black boys, neurotypical boys, are required to be soldiers. Uh, this poem is for black boys who were forced to become soldiers. Homies like him don't pass in the sleep camp out in the streets. Won't back out lest that bottle's empty. Won't pass out lest there's blood on the floor, man, there's blood on the floor. So homies poured it up for all the blood on the floor. Homies like him don't stay to clean up. Only long enough for the fiends to fiend up. So rule number two, keep the addicts in the attic. Rule number one, treat your homies like your brothers. So when the devil took my brother, I made him my brother. Ain't it blasphemous to make a sinner surplus? Ain't it blasphemous to picture God with the gun? So look at that. Him and his homies went out and bought a gun. Two, three, six, one for everyone. Him and his homies have a thing for honeys and having fun. Honeys who's long love. Honeys who con men, men they got beef with. Honeys with thick lips and even even thicker thighs, cause it don't matter if her mind's right. It just matters if we can get it tight. Ironically, he got it tatted on his chest. The notion that you can't kill a man quick and not expect his soul to haunt you long. You can't gamble with life today and still expect to be here tomorrow. When I say hi, you say hey, hi. Hey, hey. 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 When I say hey, y'all say hi. Hey. Hi. Hey. hi. Hi. When I say I love black, you say people. I love black. People! I love black people! Now we're gonna bring Queen Latifah into the room, all right? When I say you and I, you say T.Y., all right? You and I. T.Y. You and I. T.Y. That's a unity. You and I. T.Y. Hey, when I say free, you say dumb. Free. Dumb. Free. Dumb. Thank you so much, y'all. Thank you.
number one. Please give it up for Fajuma Mohammed. Cultural Center. And just to give you a quick update on where we are um, versus last year. As you know, last year we went from a small bookstore to what is now called a different Brooklyn Cultural Center. This incorporates a bookstore and a cultural space. And it is a space where the community. Oh my gosh, I must tell you, this is so wonderful. You came at 9 o'clock, and this has to be the earliest start ever. Who ever said we are not on time? There we go. And you know what is wonderful about today is, and I woke up this morning, and the first thought that I had was in August 1st, 1834, we defeated the big lie. The big lie that said that people of African descent were not human beings and were less than. We defeated them. We defeated them with the Battle of Haiti and the Haitian Revolution. We defeated that lie. allies, we are very clear that we have enabled our emancipation and we have fought hard and long for our freedom. So every July 31st or Aug the July 31st or August 1st, we recognize Emancipation Day because we know that the isms and the racism in this world is still alive and so we have, we have to expose the truth. So I'm happy to see all out here tonight because you know that we can defeat great big lies. Yeah. Give yourselves a round of applause if you are not happy. And I want everybody to do just a little something, something simple. I want everybody just to take a little tiny step forward if you can do that. One step forward. Then I want you to move one step to the side. And then I want you to move one step to the other side. And then I wanted you to move one step just further now, in front, just step forward. Wow, you have made change. And one of the things some people thought the middle passage was hot. Ooh, right? But any time that we move, we make change. And any time that we are uncomfortable and we want to be comfortable, what do we do? We make change. Yes. Did that really well. Love you all for that. I want to thank some incredible people. First of all, I want to thank a sister. Her name is Jane. She works here with the transit and she's in charge with the special events. I want to bring her up. Jane, I want you to come up, come up, come up, come up. Transit system, first class system. Sometimes they may be a little bit late. On the Jane Street bus. Thank you for all of your tenacity. We have a little something, something that we want to share with you and your crew for all your consistency and your steadfastness. So we want to appreciate that. We also want to recognize the Ontario Black History Society and its ongoing consistency. We want to recognize Rosemary Sadler and her crew. challenging the federal government to declare August 1st Emancipation Day nationally. And can I hear somebody say another holiday? Or you know, we just play. We just play. And how many people here 
said, also too, if you have not yet walked down the laneway of Charlie Roach off Sinclair, you gotta drop it and you gotta do that. And we did that a couple of weeks ago, I think it was last week sometime, there was a naming of the Charlie Roach laneway. And when we think of Charlie Roach, we think of him as being the convener of what we now call the carnival in this city. And Roger Gibbs says, Carnival is the most public expression of emancipation. So when we see people going down the road, and they may be whining, and doing all that kind of thing, we must be clear that that expression comes out of emancipation. I want to bring the girl up now, my sister, Adrian Cadet, all the way in from Ottawa. Girl just drove in, boom, just like that. Strong member of the committee. Yolanda McLean and all the people who are trade unionists tonight. Next to Louis, want to acknowledge the brother Osazi on drums. Osazi is such a deep brother. A shout out to my friend Veronica for Sullivan all the way in Barbados who makes up this incredible team and who are Miss Afrocentricity herself. So everybody up to the top of the tree, we're gonna say Veronica, we love ya! Yeah, we rolling like this, we rolling like this, we rolling like this. And Brother Senko. Also to want to point out, point out. Daniel Roach and he came up here and played the saxophone. In the tradition of street musicians, we see him all around the city just bringing beauty for, to our lives. Big him up and love him up and show him some love. And Fatima, Fatima, the next generation of poets, a woman who is part of the Rise Movement, who is in the tradition of the Dove Poets, and all that came before her, and all our great writers, give her some love, and I was so happy to know. we heard was not the English language, but was the language of the Somalian community. So make some noise for that. And now I want to big up my mother, Gloria Walker, first time that she's in the house. And she was one of the first women of 25 out of Barbados who came on the domestic system. And those women who came before us, paved the way so that we can be And people like the African Canadian Heritage Association and all of you who brought your families. I am so proud that people here can be two and 92. And when I see you fanning, I know that you are not in discomfort, but that you understand that our struggle has been one that has been heated and it's been hot and it's been uncomfortable. And so you are going through the moment. And as we transition during this train ride, when we get down onto the platform, we feeling it's a little bit hotter. I want you to tell yourself, ooh, the middle of passage might have been like this. But I always want to tell you I remind you every year I say this, we are great limbo dancers, and despite how low the bar is, we always rise to the top of it. And having said all those wonderful things, it is my great pleasure to introduce one of our scholars, a daughter of the soil of Nova Scotia. A woman who now sits in the highest office in this country, the office of the Senate. My good people, my brothers and sisters, let's welcome to the microphone, Senator Dr. Wanda Bernard. Oh my goodness. The view of you from here is absolutely amazing. Yes. So I can see, where's Ida? Where did she disappear? Ida, I can see when she's talking about everyone else who's moving and shaking and that poetry and all of that. And 
she was here moving and shaking and it's just amazing what you have done, my sister. Mm -hmm. What you are doing. Yes. Woo, woo. Yes. Absolutely amazing. Yes. So yes, I'm a senator yes. representing Nova Scotia. represent all of you. As one of too few people of African descent who sit in the Senate, let me tell you that every day, there's not a day that goes by, there's not a day that goes by, yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. There's not a, I want everyone to hear this. There's not a day that goes by that I don't bear the weight of the responsibility of speaking, thinking, feeling, remembering the realities of African people in this country. And for as much as we're here this evening to mark the eve of Emancipation Day, we need to turn that same energy into fighting anti-black racism that That's we're right. facing yeah. Yeah. today and every yeah. single day yes. in every part of this country. Yes. And for as much as we think it happens to the south of us, I don't believe there's anyone here that would not agree with me and say that it happens here. Yes. Yes. It happens here every single day. And so I'll tell you two things I want to share with you this evening. Two things that I hope will give you some, um, an injection of critical hope. One is that I've introduced an inquiry into systemic anti-black racism in the Senate. And my reason for doing that, my reason for doing that is actually to bring national awareness in this decade of people of African descent, I want to bring national awareness to our everyday reality. Yes, we have freedom, but do we really have freedom? And really, if, until all of us are free, none of us are truly free. Exactly. And so for that, for that's an important, important part of the work that I am doing, and I really invite you to follow that work. Uh, you can do it by following me on Twitter, by tuning in to uh, listen to the things that we're doing in the Senate. Uh, I'm trying to inject that voice into everything that we're doing. The second thing I would say is that Dr. Rosemary Sadler has passed a torch to me in terms of pushing this government, this federal government, to proclaim August 1st as a national day to remember emancipation. So, I take great pride in building on the work that she's been doing for so many years. And I'm, I'm going to do all that I can and work with my allies to try to bring that forward this year. And I think the timing, sometimes timing is everything. And the timing may be, may be right. And if someone has a picture of the audience, I, I need to have a copy of this picture of this audience so that we can use that. That becomes part of our evidence for the in, in significance and the importance of, of this day, what this day means to us, what this day speaks to us. So the fact that you're all here, that you've all made this commitment to be here, that speaks volumes about the need for us to nationally recognize Emancipation Day. But more than that, it's more than recognizing the day, it's recognizing the oppression, yes. recognizing the racism, and doing something about it. Yeah, yeah. So looking for systemic actions <coughs> to address systemic racism. That's what I see this as being all about. And so I'll be looking for all of you to support that work in whatever way you can and uh, we'll reach out and make sure that the information gets out to the people. So I want to thank you for including me here this evening. And I appreciate the opportunity to be part of the Freedom Ride.
our sister, Senator Dr. Wanda Barnard, a daughter of the soil of Nova Scotia. Make some noise, people. Just touch the person in front of you and say, I got your back. All right, then. All right? I'll participate, All right? And if you don't have somebody on the back, just rub your back on the wall and say, All right, then. All right, scratch your back. Don't be scratching, no. Just touch it. All right. Yeah. I got it right, yeah. That one came on me. Also, too, want to thank.